make a video to try and review our formation. Um, as it says here, the past few seasons we played 3-4-1. And now uh, we're going to shift to a 3-1-4. So three defenders and then a holding midfielder here. And then four midfielders. In the past, what we did was instead of having the holding midfielder, we had a striker. And now what we want to do is we want to let the defenders come forward. When we have the striker up here, it tends to keep the defenders in front of their goal. Even when he comes back, when the ball comes to our end, the defenders are still pretty much there waiting. So by moving this guy back, it's going to let our two center midfielders attack the goal directly. Now, the most important thing, I know we've had some confusion when I tell the boys, uh, you know, as all young teams do, but when I tell the boys to you know, stay in their place, especially the two center mids. The reason being is when the goalkeeper has the ball, they're very rarely playing it out of the back short to their defenders. Now that they can punt, they're coming forward and they're punting the ball. So like we did really well in the, in the scrimmage at Sousa the other day. But one of the things was our center mids, and I know late in the game they get tired, so if they're attacking the goal and the goalkeeper gets it, maybe they have less energy to get back. But we really want to keep these three, the two center mids and the holding mid in the middle of the field. What happens is if, when they get caught forward, trying to anticipate pressuring the ball out of the back, first of all, when they stay up, the goalie's less likely to play the ball short. Then when he punts, we basically have a big hole right here. And that's the one spot we want to prevent having that hole. So especially when the goalie's in possession of the ball, these two players don't even look at the defenders or the keeper, they just shuffle back to here. We rather the punt come and land in front of us right here. We want to stay goal side. So we want to be in between the ball and our goal back here. We don't want to be up here and then they punt it, right? And then they have less we have less people back to defend. So we want our two center mids when we don't have the ball to be right here, okay? If they're up here even and they're pressuring, uh, sorry. So then what we want to do is we want to have, uh, we're going to call, even though I have it as midfielder, we're going to call this the left winger, the left midfielder. I've been using that more with the kids, winger. So we want to have our, our wingers come forward to defend against the short, playing out of the back. Okay, or let's say he plays the ball. I'm going to use this for now as, as the defender. If he does play the ball short, we want to have our wingers come in and pressure and keep our two center mids back. Okay, we want to defend this middle of the field forcing them to play the ball outside okay now as you know when he comes down this defender ideally this midfielder would track back and defend but let's say he doesn't get back then this defender comes right and these two shift the ball's here it gives this winger or right midi time to get back and cover that space right there Okay, if he doesn't get back and they send a cross, right, then he can turn and play, and then these guys would shift back. Right? So defending, we want our two center mids in the middle of the field, in this uh, lined area, generally speaking. Now, when we're attacking, we spent a couple of years now teaching the boys to go to the corner flag with the ball. 
send the send the cross in right we want this left center mid attacking this inside post the right center mid would attack the middle of the goal and this right winger or right midi wants to angle his run in like this okay in practice i'm always reminding the boys we can't all run for the middle here right because then the defenders can just defend in the middle that's too easy for them so by angling his run into the corner it puts him in a position usually this guy's going to be a right footed player strong footed player where he can hit the cross, usually far post, unless we get the goalie at a place and he can just play it in right here. All right, but we definitely want our right winger, right midi, to angle his run in. He's going to run the middle, and he's going to angle his run this way. Okay, if he runs straight, it's going to be hard. Uh, especially if this left center mid is a right-footed player, it's going to be hard for him to play the ball. So he wants to angle his run in so that the ball comes onto his foot. He's a left-footed player, this left center mid. Uh, then that it's not as much of a, uh, an issue. Anyhow, what we've been working on in the preseason is the boys to come down, look for the cross, right, and we'll be more successful if the boy if the boys cut the ball back towards the penalty line on their crosses angle it backwards when we cross it right here it's too easy for the goalie just to pick it up now now that they're all getting better at crossing right and we've actually made a sacrifice by teaching them to go to the corner and cross with my older kids school teams or their travel teams I feel like there's not enough focus on teaching them to play to the corners. By doing that, we're dragging the defenders out wide, like I was talking about down here. If we can draw this defender out, and these guys have to shift, it's leaving more space here, causing their midfielders to have to track back further to fill the gaps. So. Assuming we defend it and they don't score, when we counterattack and go the other way, there's much more space here. Anyhow, so moving on, what we've really added is the focus, okay, for when our left winger goes to the corner, this left center mid is not running to the goal, okay? So look what happens. If we cross it and they defend it, then we have a big gap right here so I've been teaching them you have to fill this hole in but first out of these two center mids when the left winger has the ball the left center mid his only job is to support him okay he gives himself up he's not looking to score a goal he has to support this ball right here okay the right center mid again so when the left winger has the ball, the left center mid is going to support him. He doesn't want to be too close. He doesn't want to be too far away. We've worked on that about six, eight, ten feet away. Okay? This right center mid now shifts in. He's basically like a striker now. Okay? And the right winger shifts. So we're like this. So our target is across here, across there. Okay, or if he's defended well, then he's going to pass the support. Now, when that happens, he's not just, hey, thanks, you know, for the cross or, or the support ball. He's going to stay on side, of course, and make a run now. So when he gives the ball up, he doesn't just sit here. Okay, he's going to make a run. When he does that, this defender has to go with him. This is how we scored our two goals, actually. Exactly. If this defender runs with the winger, then that's his shot. Boom, right here. If this defender lets the winger go, then rather than shooting, he's playing the ball give and go, and he, it's his shot. Boom. Okay. 
at this age, it's very rare that when he comes down, he's going to pressure him trying to stop the cross. When he plays the ball here, this center defender, again, is in a bind because he has to step to the ball to block the shot or give him space and mark him. Let's say he steps to the ball. Then he's going to play it short here or he's going to cross it for this shot. Likewise, if this defender steps here, we play it back here. You, you see how these channels or, or opportunities are opening up now. And that's all coming off this four midi or two center mid, two winger attack. Okay, so, so the big change again is as these wingers go down, uh, not really change, but what we're, what we're trying to teach them to do as an alternative to sending this cross in now. Well, we've also been teaching you guys is don't force the cross where it goes out of bounds. And they're getting better and better at this. If your momentum is carrying too far where you're going to hit this cross out of bounds, do a foot stop, jump over the ball, or croif it onto your left foot. Okay, so, I'm sorry, in this case his right foot. So if you can't cross it here, stop the ball, do a croif, make a support pass, okay? Or, if his momentum carries and you croif, you can take the ball here and shoot it. Now, obviously, that would be your left foot. If he's a right-footed player, this would be your right foot. If you come here, he defends you, you take the ball back in for a shot. So, your first look is a cross. If you don't have the cross, or he's marking you, it's fine to cross it if you can keep it in bounds. It'll either get through or go off his shins and we have a corner. Okay, your, your third option is to play the ball to support. As soon as you move to support, you're moving off the ball. Just try to, you know, do your best to stay on side here. Remember, if he runs to mark your support pass, there's probably another defender keeping you on side, but make sure you come back, right? You can't play the ball and make a run and be offside. So play the ball, come back, stay here. We can play it to you. This guy would make a run there. But anyhow, um, staying on what we're talking about, we come to the corner. All right, now, if the ball does go to support here, okay, or here, right, if you have time, pick your head up. You may get the ball from support and put a ball in to this far winger. Obviously, go to the goal and shoot. He can also play the ball to the left center mid. And again, once he plays that ball, he's not just a dead duck watching. As soon as he plays that ball here, he's going to draw the defender, and that ball really should come right back to him here. Likewise, he's then going to move off the ball. And we have our wingers out here. Now when the ball comes again over here, he has to support him, he shifts, and even he shifts here, okay? We don't want to get too central though. We want to die a little bit out here to try to draw that defender there. Okay, so that is playing to the corner flags, crossing, playing it to support. He has to support him, he has to support him, okay? However, only one side is going to be going to the corner, and then these guys are here. Likewise, if they play it to the corner, okay, he's running the middle, he's running the back post. Our holding midi is going to step up. He can't step up too far because then we're really overextended, and now you see this hole or gap here. Always got to keep that gap filled because that's what's going to protect against when we don't score, the other team wins the ball and starts counterattacking. We don't really want to be exposed with just these three players here. Okay, so this holding mid can shift up. He's really, uh, I always say, it's like hockey for anyone that watches or plays hockey. Think of him as he's on the blue line. 
So when the ball is in the attacking zone, he comes up to, say, an imaginary blue line. And he's looking to keep any deflections or clearances. He wants to try to keep the ball forward. Now, when we lose the ball, okay, he has to jockey back. All right? He, he doesn't want to step and try to win the ball here because if he dives out and misses, right, they get in behind. So the holding mid is looking to keep the ball forward. When they come with the ball, he's going to drop, jockey, and contain the ball. Okay, by slowing him down, he's allowing time for our middies to track back and get goal side, meaning their back or their body is close to our goal and the ball's in front of them. Okay, when the ball gets in behind and they're not on our goal side here, we have less defenders. So again, the holding mid, when we're up attacking with our four middies, he comes forward. And our defenders, also very important, we never want to have our defenders just standing here like stationary defenders waiting for them to come. When the ball goes forward, our center back is in charge of making sure we walk forward, okay? In fact, all the way to the midline. A lot of coaches in youth soccer won't teach that because they're afraid that when the other team gets the ball and they counter, they could outrun us. Very important to have our defenders up on this line because what that does is offsides, as you guys know, starts at the midline. So even if we go further up, let's say this is the other team, they can wait at the midline. So we stop right at the midline, okay? Now, when the other team wins the ball, this guy can't cross the midline, okay, if we're on the midline, unless he has the ball. So what they can do is they can play the ball into space behind us, and if he times his run, they'll beat us. But chances are, at our age, they don't have the timing down to do that. So the best thing this guy could do is play the ball here, and he's going to be stationary. He's not on the run unless he plays it into space, but he plays it here. And then what we do is we jockey back, okay? This guy doesn't want to step here. He, he wants to jockey back. The midfielder has to get over here, pressure the ball, right? The holding mid, the left center mid, pressure the ball. But even still, we're not going to drop all the way to our goal because if we do that, Okay, then their strikers or forwards can come all the way up. We want to give a little bit of a cushion but stay up. Okay? Likewise, when we win the ball, we want our outside defenders, like we've been practicing, we've been setting up a goal and playing a scrimmage. But our defenders are not trying to score here. Our defenders, what they're trying to do in our scrimmage of practice is when they win the ball, they're trying to get it to the outside whether it's a big clearance kick up the wing and score, or he's welcome to dribble it out. Usually this is going to be a left-footed player. This would be a right-footed player. Keep the ball on your right foot away from the defender. If you dribble it here, he can win it, turn and score. If you keep it on your outside foot, put your left arm out to block him. When he gets close, you're taking your shot onto the goal. But in the games, we're going to have our winger here, whereas in practice, you're trying to score your goal there. We're going to make the pass here. Right away, this right center mid has to come support him. He's not like, here, pass, I want to go. No, right away, he has to support here because he's going to run into a defender. And rather than taking that defender on and losing the ball, he's going to make the pass here. Then he's going to run. He also then, left center mid, he's got to support him. That's really where you're making a look your pass into space there. All right, so the closest player has to support the ball. Very important we remember that. Our center mids and holding mid, they have to stay central, okay? Unless you're going out to support the ball, okay? There's no reason for you to dribble all the way out here, right? And it's so easy for them to defend. You have two players right there. so. When you don't have the ball, stay in the middle. 
when the other team has the ball, the two center mitts have to drop into here. If they're out here or out here or running around, then the middle of our field is open and it's making it too easy for them to attack us and score. The holding mid shifts up, drops back. The defense shifts up. When the ball comes, he's going to jockey back, drop back. He's not going to pressure the ball. Okay? These guys got it. That's why I'm saying we have to keep them back to pressure against, uh, to be able to defend against 